Imagine you're a farmer from a couple thousand years ago. In this scenario, you farm potatoes. I mean, you can do a lot with a potato. You can make french fries, mashed potatoes, hash browns, a lot of useful and tasty things. However, because you're a potato farmer, you grow all the potatoes and wish to try something that uh, doesn't grow on the ground. So you're wanting a full, juicy, bright red apple to enjoy. Now remember, this is a few thousand years ago, so how are you going to get that apple? Well, you know a friend who has a friend who actually farms apples. So you make the trip over to his apple farm, and you ask him if you can have some of his apples, if you'll share some of your potatoes. He kindly agrees, since he's also sick of apples, and you guys make the trade. Now, there was no intermediary, there were no fees, no taxes, you didn't have to show him your driver's license or anything, you just traded a raw material with someone else. Now, let's fast forward to about 10 years ago. Let's say you grew potatoes in your backyard, and you decided that you wanted an apple. How would you go about this? Well, personally, I would try to sell my potatoes for some cold hard cash on something kind of like Facebook Marketplace, then I'd walk to my local grocery store and use my new cash to buy an apple. The cash is used as a currency, unlike what we had before. Cash doesn't go bad, but potatoes do. So you decided to sell all your potatoes as quickly as you can so that you can save up cash to buy apples whenever you want, or really any other fruit for that matter, even if it's grown on the other side of the world. In fact, you can pay a small fee for almost any fruit that you want at your local grocery store. In this scenario now, we are using a currency to trade, something to meet in the middle. So we don't actually have to go to that apple farmer, or the pineapple farmer, or the coffee bean grower. And we don't have to have a conversation with them. Instead, we can have an intermediary, like the grocery store, always keep stock of our favorite fruits, so that we can buy them whenever we want, and very easily. We pay the supermarket a fee so that they can stay in business, and so that they have a reason to keep stock for us. So now we're using currencies and paying fees, but at least it's seeming to make our life a little easier, with a little bit more variety. As time goes on, the supermarket wants to make more money, so what do they do? They increase their fees. They know that you can't go to the other side of the world to talk to that coffee bean grower, so they can charge almost whatever they want. Well, that was a pretty long intro, but let's bring it back to Uniswap. Now, imagine you wanted to find that original apple farmer and trade your potatoes with him again, so that way you avoid having to switch your potatoes to cash and then cash to apples, and so you don't have to pay the fee. Well, this is basically what Uniswap is. The Uniswap exchange lets you swap any Ethereum token for any other Ethereum token, and you pay a very very, very small fee. It does this by essentially being the grocery store, but without cash. See, instead you give them your potatoes and they immediately give you the apples. So how do they do this? Well, they keep a very large bin in the back with a ton of apples and potatoes so that anyone who wants to can make a trade. If someone comes in and buys a ton of apples, so there's not very many apples left in the bin, then the grocery store, they just start charging more potatoes for each apple. They'll make you pay two potatoes for each apple. Then they'll make you pay three potatoes for each apple until someone comes in with a bunch of apples and restocks the supply. If this example is making sense to you, we've done our job, and I hope that you reward our hard work and creativity by clicking the like button on this video. Now, to extrapolate out this example, let's say your potatoes are Ethereum, and the apples that you want to buy are Basic Attention Token, which is actually a pretty popular Ethereum token. When you give the grocery store, which is Uniswap in this case, your Ethereum, they give you a fair market price of Basic Attention Token. Now, after you're done, the price of Basic Attention Token rises because there's less of it since you bought it and the price of ethereum drops because there's more of it since you sold it to them it's basically supply and demand within the grocery store but this is uniswap so the next guy that comes along and wants to trade will have to buy basic attention token at a higher price or sell some ethereum at a higher price in some cases a trader may be able to buy ethereum for two thousand dollars at coinbase and sell it to uniswap for two thousand fifty dollars making a profit even though what they're actually doing is just evening out this liquidity pool that way, Uniswap, or the grocery store, has an even amount of potatoes and apples, or Ethereum and basic attention token. Now this is essentially what an automated market maker is, but we have a whole video on that, or we will, so you should subscribe to see it soon. But this also begs the question, where is all of that Ethereum and basic attention token coming from in the first place? Well, it's time to bring out some technical terms. First, in this analogy, the grocery store in Uniswap is actually called a liquidity pool. Now there's a pool of Ethereum 
Ethereum and Basic Attention token with a ton of coins of each of them. And the prices of each are such that as more of one is traded up, the other is traded down. Secondly, we call the place where the coins come from liquidity providers because they provide the initial liquid assets to the pool. In fact, you can become a liquidity provider very easily. You just have to give your money and your tokens to the Uniswap pool. Boom, you're what they call an LP. But why would you want to be an LP? Well, remember when I said there was a very small fee to trade on Uniswap? Well, that fee doesn't go to the government, it doesn't go to Uniswap, but it actually goes to the actual investors of Uniswap, the liquidity providers. That way, we can reward them for allowing us to do quick swaps of our coins. Even if the fee is 0.03% for each trade, if there's 10 trades using your coins a day for a whole month, that's 9% a month, which is 108% ROI for any liquidity provider, which is 108% return on your investment. Now, you should know there's two main uses for Uniswap. You could be a token swapper and change your Ethereum for basic attention token for only 0.03%, which maybe you wanna do. In fact, Uniswap currently has over $1 billion of trading volume each day. Or you could be a liquidity provider and earn a return on your investment by lending it to the pool. Right now, there are $9 billion in all of the pools that Uniswap has. Now this is the foundation of what Uniswap is. You should know that it's also all code. It's just being ran by servers. There's no regulations on it. There's no taxes technically. There's not even someone to stop it if they wanted to. Someone could just start another server and run the program. It functions like a foreign bank, allowing you to change your United States dollars to Canadian dollars, then to Indian rupees, then to Japanese yen, but it's also decentralized. So there's super low fees and absolutely no taxes. See, if Uniswap exchange did not exist, you would have to sell your Ethereum, then you'd have to find an exchange that allows you to buy basic attention token. And not all exchanges have both of these. So you might have to change from one exchange to another exchange. Uniswap solves a big problem. So far in this video, I've been talking about the Uniswap exchange the decentralized application that allows you to swap Ethereum tokens at uniswap.org. Now, you should know that there's also a Uniswap token, an Ethereum token that represents the decentralized application. The Uniswap token is created hand-in-hand -in -hand with the Uniswap exchange. When you buy the Uniswap token right now, you really can't do anything with it. But down the road, token holders should be able to make votes to specific changes on the exchange. For example, since I said nobody controls it, technically it's code, and token holders could agree to change something if they wanted to. So if you hold a bunch of Uniswap and wanted to raise the trading price from 0.03% to 0.06%, in fact doubling the fee, theoretically you could vote on that. But right now they haven't implemented a voting system. The token really has no intrinsic value at the moment, but it does represent the exchange, and the exchange is very valuable and has a very useful purpose. Another reason for owning the Uniswap token is that one day, a percentages of all the trades happening might go to the Uniswap token holders as well, basically earning them passive income, the same as a liquidity provider. Now, this is all speculative though, but here at Whiteboard Crypto, we want you to have all the facts before making any financial decisions. I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully learned a little bit about this booming new technology and decentralized application called Uniswap. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And also don't forget to subscribe for future videos. We are working very hard to write, narrate, and animate these videos. So if you enjoyed it, please reward us. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next video.